and welcome to That's Girl Speaks. Today is Wednesday, October 24th, and this is episode 231. I'm Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat SQRRL on Instagram. I will not lie to you. I sat down like 40 minutes ago to try to record this nonsense and had a total self possession crisis. <laughs> it feels like it's been 75 years since I've done this, and now it feels very awkward and weird. I mean, I guess anybody who would say that I, that was like not 100% narcissistic would say that. Like, right, you're talking to yourself and expecting people to watch you talk to yourself. Like, that should be awkward and weird, but usually it's very natural. <laughs> no armchair diagnoses, people. Uh, but today feels very strange. I don't know if it's because I am like re-entering from the Rhinebeck trip and like that trip being with family and then like those intersecting universi and so I don't know what's going on but I feel very disjointed like I literally put in a day of recovery after I got back from Rhinebeck not the trip home which was epic totally uneventful but 16 hours door to door <sighs> Like after that even, a day of just like, still, I'm after the day of, and I still am like, rah, 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 even more than normal. So I don't know, man. Whew. I have been thrown of all the loop-de-loo. And it's not in any way a bad thing. Like, like I got nothing but wonderful, beautiful, good energy. Maybe it's just that. Maybe it's just like, like it's the Thanksgiving meal of good energy. And like the tryptophan of your awesomeness is just still slugging me down in a weird way. I don't know, but it's wonderful, but I'm just still very discombobulated. Um, so hopefully, right, nothing like a good, don't watch this, it's total garbage to get you started. <laughs> and it's gonna be awesome. So this week, what I will think, I think what I'll do is talk about knitting first. We've been doing that lately. Um, I don't necessarily want to continue that forever, but especially today, because I have knitting, and then I have a huge shameless self-promotion segment. Shop update, Friday, October 26, 9 p.m. Eastern. So I have a huge section of shameless self-promotion. And then I also have, of course, Rhinebeck regurgitation is not the right word, but I do love some alliteration. Some Rhinebeck recapping, some Rhinebeck reminiscing, some Rhinebeck, okay, rollback, okay, stop. So that's going to happen too, but I think I will do that in because I know a lot of folks get a little twitchy about those sorts of things, so I'll put that at the end. Um, and I maybe will try to even do some timestamps. We'll see how together I am later. Don't pressure me. I don't know what's gonna happen. So anyway, grab a cuppa, grab some laundry to fold, grab your knitting. Oh, let's go. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about knitting first. Um, in case you're wondering, I am wearing a Gigi cardigan, and I apologize, I don't know off the top of my head who that is by, uh, but it is in Peace Fleece Worsted. Um, in case you're just like, hmm, that two inches of that sweater looks like really my jam. There you go. <laughs> okay. So, knitting. I Do I have finished? Oh, I have lots of finished objects. What am I doing here? Is that my only work in progress? Perhaps. No, this is too. And so is that. Where's that at? Oh my gosh, could I talk to myself anymore while we're doing this? Is that very exciting for you? Let's just see what happens. <laughs> so last time, I think, I showed you my Busta Beanie. And this is a pattern by Gudrun Johnston that was part of the Shetland Wool Week. I think it has since been released on, her, on Ravelry as not part of Shetland Wool Week, but I could be completely wrong. And this is in Quince and Company chickadee so the pattern is written for worse for fingering weight excuse me 
Um, this is, of course, sport weight because the pattern is only written in one size and I have a giant noggin. And I also kind of like a little bit of, I don't know that I totally go with positive ease, but definitely not a lot of negative ease in my hats because I do like to wear my hats a lot. And so when you have a little bit more room in there, when they're not really snug, your hair tends to be less negatively affected by them. Also, you tend to have less of like this effect where like the hair, the hat is like compressing your hair and then it's just like trying to escape down here. That's what I found anyway. So this is um, Quince and Company Chickadee. This is Damson. The dark purple is Frank's Plum. And then the yellow, the goldy, is Honey, which is one of my favorite colors. And I dig it with the gray purple quite a bit. So yeah, um, in case you're wondering, I don't know how many repeats the pattern is written for, or how many vertical repeats, but I have one, two, three, four. I have four complete repeats of the vertical pattern to be four decreases. So, or maybe four and a half. Yeah, four and a half, I think. Mm, maybe four. <laughs> I can't remember. I know that sounds crazy, but I can't remember if this is a decrease row, but I don't think it is. So I think I have four and a half repeats of the pattern before, yeah, that's not. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven total stripes, including this one. Oh my goodness. So in case you're wondering what exactly I did. Okay, so there's that. I don't know why I'm putting it back on, because I might have another hat to share with you. Just saying. Okay, so there's that. And then the other finished object I have, okay, literally is the next half. Okay. <laughs> so this hat pattern is called Thermal, and it is free um, on Ravelry. It is a Green Mountain Spinnery hat pattern. And it is written for their yarn, but it works for a fingering weight yarn. This is Madeline Tosh Light. No, it's not the single ply one. It's the Madeline Tosh Twist. It's the fingering weight one that's not a sock. Wait, is it Twister? Whatever, you don't care. It's the ginger colorway. That's the main thing that matters. Because there's Madeline Tosh Light, which is the single ply. There's Madeline Tosh Sock, which is the one that's 100% superwash, which I believe is what this is. And then there's Madeline Tosh Twist, which is a superwash nylon. I believe this is the one that's 100% superwash. And that thermal hat, oh my gosh, that's a lot of me talking. This thermal hat pattern is by Kate Salomon. So that is free. Um, here is the pattern image. I guess I could turn it this way for you. And so you can see what it looks like in a woolen spun yarn. It's super, well, I don't know that they're completely woolen spun, but it definitely has more of that feel. Green Mountain Spinner yarns, of course, are always beautiful. And so this is my version. I tend to be a new, we should just do the, I really should just do the podcast this close to you. I feel like the energy is better. I'm turning into such a new age chick in my older life. Anyway. Um, let's just break down these barriers of space between us. Look at you. It really does feel more comfortable up here. I don't know why. Anyway. <laughs> so many issues. So this is the ginger colorway. I am a loose knitter. That's where we're going. I am a loose knitter. So I typically go down two needle sizes when I am doing anything, at least to start. Sometimes three. Okay, so I knit my brim on zeros. So I'll try to get you a good shot. I knit my brim on zeros, so it's about up to here. And then I change to a US one and a half for the remainder. And I did knit the pattern as written, so it is written as a slouchy, as a slouchy hat. And then let me show you the top, how it decreases, because it is nice. Now, don't make fun of my cat butt top, because I'll tell you why it's like that in a minute. But you can see those slip stitches continue up, and you're decreasing in that garter section in the middle. Um, I did knit this um, in the round, but I did it with the, um, the no purling technique. 
So I'm planning on writing a pattern fairly soon that uses a slight modification of that technique. But in the meantime, if you're interested, um, you can Google no, no pearl garter in the round. Um, Knitting Pipeline Paula has a video about how she does it, which is the same way I do it. Um, I did it a little bit differently for this one, which I will, again, talk about later. But um, it's essentially the same thing. And so this is my very, this is my seam row. You can see it's a little bit wider. Oh my goodness, could you see it? Maybe if I could get myself together. You can see that it's a little bit fatter than the other slip stitch rows. But seeing as it's in the back of the hat, you don't see it because especially since it's a slouchy one, it just rolls right down. And then you want to see the inside of my hat? Because <laughs> this is what happened. I took this hat with me on the way to Rhinebeck, so I, we drove, and by we I mean not at all me. Um, I met my family in Cincinnati, my parents in Cincinnati, and then they drove us from Cincinnati to Ancrum, New York, which is like basically the back of beyond outside of Rhinebeck. <laughs> so while I did in fact bring several projects, which I did not at all work on, I was almost done to this. I was like, I was starting the decreases for the top and I brought needles for the other projects. I brought interchangeables. I knew I would need to switch to magic loop. I brought those. Did I bring a tapestry needle? Did I? No, I did not. So what I had to do <laughs> Saturday morning before Rhinebeck, um, I got, well, I was awake anyway, quite frankly, because I was just going to plan on wearing a different hat, but I was awake anyway. So I took my um, inner chow, oh, it doesn't matter what, what they were, but I had brought my tiny chow goo interchangeables, which go down to a triple zero. Not good. I'm trying to drink my hippie dirty foot tea because my I'm carrying so much fluid. After that 16 hour from door to door car trip, again, we were not in the car for 16 hours, but pretty much. I am carrying so much fluid on my person. Like, I'm a big lady, and I think I'm not a doctor. But <laughs> I'm convinced that you can carry a certain percentage of your body weight and fluid. And since I'm a 350 pound lady, let me just discuss I'm carrying a lot of fluid on my body right now. So I'm trying to drink my hippie, hippie, hippie dirt feet tea, which actually is not bad at all. I drink um, stinging nettle. And I used to make like a tincture with it because I like to pretend I'm Appalachian and I like to use the word tincture a lot. So you make this super strong tea that's like insane and you refrigerate and it really is like the grassiest. I know a lot of you like it. I do not. It's very grassy and I take it like wheatgrass shots, like just kick it back. Well, I didn't want to do that this time so I literally just made it with black tea. It's delicious. I can't even taste it. Why wouldn't I do that? You, some of you told me to do that all along. I didn't believe you. So anyways, if you have trouble with fluid retention, stinging nettle tea is really good. <laughs> I just started drinking it today. I should have drank it tomorrow, but whatever. What were we talking about? Needles. Okay, so I totally forgot to bring a tapestry needle with me. And so instead what I did is I took my triple zero interchangeable because the chow goo, I actually don't love the chow goo interchangeable, the tiny ones, because the cable is so flexible. Because it goes down to a triple zero, the cable is like, like I'm not a fan of high highs because I feel like the cable's too floppy and the cable is similar. It's very flexy. So the good thing about that though is, is if you don't have a tapestry needle, you can hook on a can hook on um, a cable to your triple zeros and then basically put your triples to zeros together and use the cable as like the eye of a needle. So I just took that and used it to sew up the top of my hat and then down like just like 10 stitches but that's why the I need to actually go back with a real and do it correctly to close up my cat butt. Um, but that's why this is like this. Because I was afraid, even though this tail is super long, I was somehow afraid that if I didn't secure it in some way, that it would just come unraveled in the day and I would have like all of my stitches drop out. So that's why that's like that. 
think if you're in a pinch, you could tell Because <laughs> even though it was on one and a half at the top, it was still, there was still enough room to use those triple zeros held together as a tapestry needle um, without having to take it off of the one and a halves. So it's all very secure. Let's back up. <laughs> You're like, we need a barrier between us of time and space. I know, I'm sorry. It's a little bit aggressive of me to get so close to you. But anyway, so those, I think those are my finished objects. Yes, I did not do any spinning these two weeks, like at all. Right? So let's talk about works in progress. Okay, I'll show you this, because I showed this to you last time. Um, I really did try to get my Freya. This is Freya by Jared Flood. It is a Brooklyn tweed pattern written specifically for quarry. Uh, this is the, uh, the colorways in the show notes. I think it's Lazurolite. Or is it anthracite? Some sort of mineral. Um, so I have it all knit. And I even have the side seams seamed. But I was literally doing this the night before I was supposed to go to Cincinnati. And I just got to the point where I was like, settle down and just release this. Because even if I had finished it, I would have never worn it. So what if it had been like terribly uncomfortable or like fit weird or something and I was like fighting a sweater all day. So I just released my need to finish this. So I still need to do the um, shoulder seams and the, the collar because it is like a shawl collar. Sew that all down. And then I need to make pockets. So I don't know when that will be finished. It might be finished next time. It might not. It just depends on where I'm at. I did use um, some Quinz and Company Finch in just like a navy blue, like their peacoat colorway, to do the seaming. And I do think that was a very good idea. You can't in any way see it. Um, but it was, of course, to seam with the quarry is challenging because it's that it's technically a triple apply, like very lightly twisted. But if you've seen anything with like a lopy or any of the um, like shelter or cor shelter quarry or loft, they do, if you put a lot of tension on the yarn, it will break. Uh, now that's not to mean that it's not a dirt, like a good yarn for garments because again, Lopi, which has been used for since before I was knitting, which has been a long time, um, still has wonderfully durable garments. Um, because once it's knit up, it adds structure to it that it would not have just like loose in the strand. So that's not an issue, but for seaming it, it is difficult. So I did just use um, some Quince and Company Finch. Is that what I said? Fingering weight. Um, and you cannot see it as with the mattress stitch. Now, I am a little curious how I'm gonna do the shoulder uh, because usually I graft the shoulder, the vertical, like a vertical to vertical piece, um, which sounds like all of them. But anyway, you know what I mean. Normally I would graft a shoulder seam. Um, and that, that doesn't mean like there's live stitches. It just means you use the same technique to basically create another row of knitting that joins them. Um, and so, of course, I don't want to do that with a, a yarn that is not identical. Um, so I don't know for sure exactly how I'm going to seam that shoulder seam. But whatever, I'll figure it out. So there's that. I say it's yeah I said what yarn it was okay sorry my washing machine's running for some reason in that 45 minute break I had between like sitting down originally I decided to run a little laundry I don't know what's wrong with me anyway so there is that though and then I have what's in here let's find out this is a pattern this is a bag by Tangerine Designs which is super one of my favorites it's great for purse knitting uh, that's a sock that you've seen many times, so that's not what I thought it was. I'm going to get close again. <laughs> okay, this is good. But I have one more. Okay, I'm going to come right back and we'll discuss further. <laughs> Maybe I'll be this close to you. Maybe not. We'll just see what happens. Okay, still this close. <laughs> So 
So I have started a few hats that were my road knitting. So the fa the first one, they're both gifted yarns, which I felt like was, I don't know, I was compelled to cast on gifted yarns um, because, you know, there's so much, anyway, I don't want to get verklempt. But I'm very lucky to be in a position where people are generous and want to share their love of yarn and wool with me, and I very much appreciate it. Um, the first yarn was gifted, gifted to me by the dyer at last year's Maryland um, Needles Up. So this is Dragon Horde Yarn. This is her colorway, Tarot. I'm telling you, my new age self. Um, and this is her lore sock base, which is 100%, no, excuse me, which is 100 grams, 436 yards of 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon. And look at how cute it is. So I'm just doing a sock head hat. You can find that pattern on Ravelry, and I apologize. I can't remember who does it right now, but I'll put it in the show notes, which you can find at thefatsquirrel.com. So let me get the good, let me get lighting working here. So it is a speckle yarn, and is it not? <laughs> I love it. I am not always a huge purple fan, and this is definitely like a lilac wash background, but it has these wonderful kind of acid gold yellow and brown, and then like also fuchsia and deep purple pops. Let me You would think I was like really confident about the quality of my skincare products. <laughs> so I think you can see there, like you get these great little bumps of color as you're knitting, which is of course I think the pleasure of the speckle yarn. Um, so I'm enjoying that quite a lot. It will be a slouchy hat, much like this. Um, I say that I use the socket hat, but I don't, I definitely did not do as much ribbing as they do. Um, so yeah, I just ribbed until I felt like I was done. So again, also zeros for my ribbing, uh, US one and a halfs for the body of the hat. I don't know, I feel like I keep needing to show it to you, but I've enjoyed it quite a lot. <coughs> So there is that. And then the next hat, I'm just going to stand up here. The next hat I'm working on is another Ricky hat. Again, designer will be in the show notes. And this yarn was gifted to me at last year's Rhinebeck at the podcaster meetup. It is Zom Zomari Dialab. Now I'm not sure what that actually says. This is the Faraday base in 100% superwash merino, 250 yards, 150 grams. It is DK, and this is the colorway hashtag basic. If basic were really extra, but uh, yeah, basic. Uh, <laughs> so this is, isn't this beautiful? I wonder why somebody would give me this color. I can't imagine. So thank you so much to your face. I really do love it. I have loved it on my shelf and now I'm loving it in my hat. So here it is. It is, again, the Ricky hat, which is a garter stitch slouchy hat, which is one of my favorite patterns. It's very wearable. Um, I did my brim on threes. I meant to do twos, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> And then I'm doing the body on fours. Um, let me see. Let me find my seam. Here's the seam again. I'm doing no pearl garter in the round. And that is my seam line. You can kind of see it. There you go. You can see it there. There. <laughs> Six years still right and left. Very confusing. Um, so, yeah. I'm enjoying that quite a lot, of course. So apparently this week was all about garter in the round. And then, yeah. So that's it. That's it. That's all the knitting. Again, no spinning this week. Shame on me. And then let's talk about 
Let's do, okay, let's do shameless self-promotion, even though I really just want to do Rhinebeck next because it's closest to me. Uh, but let's do shameless self-promotion and then we'll do Rhinebeck, okay? I guess I should probably back up a little bit. So again, October 26th, 9 p.m., fatsquirrelfibers.com. If you forget, you can always just Google Fat Squirrel. It'll probably show up. Um, update. Okay, <laughs> so these will all be ready to go out the door. Um, they may go out like Tuesday the following week just because there's a lot of bags and hopefully you will buy them all. <laughs> and hopefully it'll take me more than a minute to pack them all up. Uh, but they are all ready to go. They are not a pre-order situation. Um, next thing coming up will be probably the second weekend of no or second Friday of November. I will have holiday and winter bag update. And then that should take us through the end of the year. Um, I plan on maybe doing, um, a lot of people really loved the owl bag that I had at SS or at Needles Up. Um, and it had like a faux bois owl look. It was an Aaron sweater, so it was a big guy. And it had like a charcoal back, black background. Um, so a lot of people that saw that wanted it and we, we did sell out of that one. I may do that as a pre-order, but it will probably be after the first of the year. Um, but that should, that is on the, that is on my horizon plans. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about this. Okay. So for, I'm going to show you in order from like smallest bags to largest bags. Um, if for some reason when you go on the website, you're like, that's not my bag that I want. It's not there. Um, it probably means that you're um, not seeing all of the listings. So like if you go to the bottom and hit products, it will give you the whole list or it'll get all of them. Otherwise it just gives you like the first three or four listings. Um, so yeah, that may be the problem, but otherwise everything should be there and I'll leave them up for like at least 12 hours probably even if they have sold out, just so you know, like, okay, I'm seeing what I'm seeing. That's a lot of me talking to say. Let's talk about sock bags. Okay. So here we go. Right. So my sock plus bag is great for hat projects. It's great for sock projects. It does have a zipper. It does have a handle. It is typically lined with my unbleached stuff. It stands up by itself. It squishes up nicely the whole shebang. So do you love these guys so much? <gasps> right. So you have the fun of the bunny and the lettuce, but then you also have these beautiful gourds. I don't know why I'm in, well, hi, I love all things squash. But right. Isn't that gorgeous? And such a good color palette. We were discussing, so there's mushrooms. We were discussing like why I have this weird, I don't know. I have a theory that children of the 70s, so I was actually a 78 baby, but ch I was in the Midwest, so we're always kind of behind. So like children of the 70s, early 80s, have like a mushroom thing. And I think it's because mushrooms were such a big deco thing back then. Like lots of kitchen, like my babysitter in Georgetown, Ohio, totally had toadstools either in her wallpaper or like as a large motif in her kitchen and that is where I learned to play the Atari and so that is why I think that I still dig mushrooms so much. You needed to know all that information. <laughs> Buy a bag. <laughs> anyway so that's I don't I'm like thinking like maybe that's why I'm so mushroom obsessed but so then oh such sweet pumpkins. Again, that great combination of the the purple and orange, but not the jewel tone version. That nice kind of grayer wash that makes it feel a little bit less Halloween-y. You know what I mean? It still has that good palette. Do you love her prints? Right? How cute is that? And now I can't remember her name. It's like Maria Bell or something like that. She does such beautiful work and her prints are always gorgeous. And they walk that line between cutesy and like, oh no, that's just graphic from a distance. Oh, but wait, there's totally foxes and owls. <laughs> oh my goodness. So cute. Do you see me trying to fear? There she's Maria Bell print. She does such great, and I mean, hi, that color combination. Yeah. 
Um, this is the only one that is Quilter's Cotton, so it's an interface Quilter's Cotton for my Pyrex po folks. So this is the exception to the rule in that it does have a quilter's cotton lining. But isn't that and let me just discuss. I don't know if it'll still smell like that by the time it gets to you, but I was at Needles Up and I was right next to Tuft Woolens. So all of my bags smell gorgeous. Right? So there's that. Mushrooms. Okay. So gorgeous. And then, ta -da! now this one I do have both in a sock size. It's the only one that I have in two sizes and a large wedge size. So this, unlike the others, which are primarily a, like a light, like a cotton, this is a um, cotton linen blend. So you might see it has a little bit slightly more rumpled finish, um, but it's still like a decorator weight. It still has good body. Would still stand up on its own. Um, and of course, this has got the fun. I'm not saying it's pumpkin spice, but it's pumpkin spice. I don't even like pumpkin spice lattes, but I really want to because I love pumpkin and all things spice. Isn't that pretty? And of course, high mod foliage. Okay, I'm totally in. Yeah. So there's that. And now the rest of them will be, well, not. These, this chunk will be all large wedge size. So large wedge sizes are great for like up to three skein projects. So a shawl or what have you. Um, or they're great if you want to hold like a hat and a shawl that you're just working on both at the same time. So this one is the only, no, that's not true. We have two quilters cottons and they are these. So first, cats. Hello. Isn't this a great color combo? It's totally not my jam, but I dig it. Somehow the gray in there just really balances it out to me. There's so much to learn from surface designers. So much to learn from them. Then this is the other Quilters Con. Hi. This one went very unnoticed and I love it. Right? Are you excited that it went unnoticed? Cause it's gorgeous. I love this print. I actually tried to get more of this print and it was sold out. I love it. Okay, so now those do both have, even though they're quilters cotton, they do have the, the unbleached line. I just find it works better to be able to see what you're doing. It gives it a little bit more body um, and I dig it. So, here we go. Along the coffee theme from a minute ago. <gasps> right? Cats and tea and candles. And isn't this a great color combo? Ooh, love it. Dig it. And then, right. I love this floral. Good abstract woodland mashup. See, there's still a mushroom in there. I got your back, 70s kids. I got you. Such a good color combination. Oh, zipper. Just saying. These cuties and their umbrellas. Right? Aren't they sweet? So good. Oh, speaking of cuties. So we have our sweet little tea reading yogis. Oh, so ready to get you into the cozy season. So cozy. I like how I am aggressively cozy. Are you aggressively cozy? I'm, I'll admit it. I'm aggressively cozy. I'm not, I'm not chill in my coziness. I have like active cozying. Hmm. I think that might need to be a show title. Aggressive cozy. I have no pen. Have I done this before? Like, what's my deal? <laughs> no, I haven't. No, don't. That was a lie. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> mm, meow. 
Um, so there is that. Then, oh, also largely unnoticed, one of my favorites. How much do you love them? So many pumpkins. And this color combination is awesome. I love that intense orange with the aqua and the greens. Oh, so good. In your aggressive cozying scheme, do you have succulents? I have not made it there yet. I feel like it's really something I want to do, but I just haven't made the leap. But I do love some succulents. Mm, look at that. No porch. Okay, so then now we're into sweater bags. What's Ryan back if you don't have some sheep? Right? I think these are South. I'm voting that these are South Downs. Like baby doll South Downs. What do you think? They're very cute. There's some sweet sleepy sheep. Mm. I love this print. What? I don't... I always want to call it Federalist wallpaper, but I know I'm totally just making that up. But do you love it? It looks like a historical wallpaper. Oh, I love, I aggressively love this one. <laughs> Whatever. I'm so totally Googling Federalist wallpaper just to see if it's a thing. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. Psh. Whatever. For your new age high vibe self. Oh, so nice. It is not metallic. It has the look and the feel of a metallic, or excuse me, the look of a metallic finish, but it's just what the designer has done with shading of that gold, which I dig. Isn't that rich looking? Oof. Oof. I love it. I love it. And then we have, oh, some sweet brew. Right? So it kind of has a fall vibe in terms of like the foliage colors, but I think the cool gray background kind of balances that out so it doesn't scream fall. It has like a kind of a winter, like the tr the dried twigs and stuff that the, the birds light on. I love it. And this bird is so winding me. Mm. Right? Oh, and then, oh my gosh. Don't let that pigeon drive the bus! Ah. It's not that pigeon, but... I'm in love with it! Oh, lime green and navy. Such a good color combo. Oof. And then the last sweater bag is... <gasps> right! How sweet are these little... Ch little porcelain kitty cats. That's right. It's like your grandma's curio shelf. With all of her collectible curios. Curio kitty cats. I just said curio like three times and I don't know that I've said it three times in my life. I'm just pointing that out. That's what I do for you people. That's what I do for you. Okay, so then the rest are Aaron sweaters and I don't have nearly as many of those so I will say that if you want an Aaron sweater bag, get on it! Also the sweaters too. Um, might need to be in there. I usually don't encourage that because it feels like crazy and like self meh, but I'm just being honest. <gasps> oh. Right. Oh, it's such a treat. The tortoises are such a good color. And there's mushrooms, I'm not lying. I have a secret mushroom on everything. Not really, but... Mm. Love it. Love it. Did you see there's a little bird too? Oh, so cute. Am I even pointing at it? No, I'm not. Oh, so cute. And they smell like Martha. <laughs> well, not Martha's person. Well, I'm sure Martha's person does smell like that. But tufted woolens. Yay! Right, 
in this fun colorway of the winterberry uh, mushrooms. They're not aggressively mushrooming. The next one is aggressively mushrooming. Right. Not a nice palette. And then the final bag. Aggressive mushrooms. Right. Mmm. I do not have good walking in the woods mushrooming luck that other people do, but you can have this bag if you don't, because it's good for you. Do you love these? Mm, so many good bags. That's all the bags. I think. I may find another one that I didn't see, but I think that's all the bags. That'll be in the Friday update. Oh my goodness. Ugh. Now let's talk about riding back. Oh my goodness. It was amazing. Of course it was. Of course it was. Don't be ridiculous. There was a pin in my pocket this whole time, by the way. Anyway. <laughs> so I wrote notes, but let's face it. Like I thought of a jillion things to talk to you about. And I couldn't remember all of them. So I'm like referencing my notes that I put in my phone. Let's see what those are. Okay, Rhinebeck, Traffic Triangles. Okay, I've never seen these before. This is not exactly Rhinebeck related, but I have a question. Can you answer it? So we stayed on the east side of the Hudson this time. We've always stayed, or I've always stayed on the west side. Um, and they have these tri, these, they're not roundabouts because they really are what would normally be a T intersection, but they're triangled. So you have like these beautiful, like curved triangle shapes. What are those? What is that called? Is that called a thing? I've never seen them before. I dig them, but I don't know what they're called. Cause that was that. Oh my gosh. Do you want to see what a great artist I am? Oh my gosh. I was, there was a certain architecture style that I've, I know I've seen before. Like, it's not like I was like, this is clearly unique only to this area, but I've not seen a lot of it. So to remind myself to look it up. Are you ready? Are you ready for my intense, awesome art skills? This is the roof line that I'm talking about. You know what that is, right? So <laughs> the roof line is like, okay, I really can't do left and right. The roof line has like this like trapezoidal thing going on. And then they always have like dormer windows in that roof line that have like curved tops. So that's clearly what that is. You know, that's what that is. If you know what architecture style it is, feel free to put it in the notes. <laughs> I will try to look it up for myself. I don't expect you to be my Google, but I just felt like I had to share with you my intense competence at capturing real life. I'm just telling you. What else do we need to talk about? Oh, I talked about my tapestry needles. We also saw like a jillion turkeys. It was very exciting. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm from a rural area. Like, when I go to my mom and papa's house, like I will inevitably see some turkeys, some wild turkeys. But these, well, there was like, kind of like a bird's level of wild turkeys at some point. Like I'm, I'm just saying, like I was in a vehicle, but if I had somehow been like stranded and had to walk through that field, it was the amount of turkeys. Cause I guess they had just, um, well, they probably have just harvested those fields, and so they there there was because there was a gajillion deer too. The animals were probably just gleaning what was left, but it was intense, like super intense about turkeys. What's going on, Eastern Hudson River Valley? What's going on? It was intense. Anyway, it was very exciting. I got really excited about the turkey. What else do we need to talk about? You're like, nothing. You need to talk about nothing. You can hit stop. You do not have to. I promise there is no like sage advice left in the in this podcast. So you can stop. It's okay. It's okay. But what else do I need to talk about? 
<laughs> okay, let's just go sequentially. Needles up. So awesome. We were in a different location this year. We were in um, the Best Western Conference Center. From what I understand is where um, Indian Tangled has been in the past. They moved on to a location in Socrates, which I heard nothing but wonderful things about. I mean, not particularly the location. Not that I heard bad things, but you know, overall. I don't mean I'm just complimenting the location. I heard lovely things about the shopping felt much more manageable and it wasn't so crazy. So I am so excited that they made those changes that are working for people. Um, and because of that, we were in their old location, which was a little bit more room um, and provided, of course, like on-site parking if, if people were nervous about that. Because Rhinebeck, the town of Rhinebeck, can get a little bit crazy. Um, it is a little bit crazy during that weekend. <laughs> so thank you so much to everybody who came out. Thank you extra so much to everybody who came out and said hello. Thank you extra, extra somebody, extra, extra, extra to everybody who came out and bought a bag. It was awesome. It was crazy getting there because we had four people in the truck this year. And so like at one point we had to like throw my daughter into the back to like, to, like Tetris in bags because it was super intense <laughs> to have all of that stuff. And like there's nothing for your anxiety like carrying 20% of your yearly, yearly income, like in one place, like, do you know what I mean? Like that's, that's totally great for your calming self. <laughs> at one point, Friday night. So Friday night we got in like at, after 11 sometime. We came in every, you know, got the Airbnb, like got settled in or whatever. Went to bed. It was so, it was like, oh my gosh. I just laid down for like five minutes and I thought, you know what? I'm just not comfortable leaving all those bags in the truck. <laughs> and there's like five of the like big Ziploc totes. You know what I mean? Like those ones that are like this big. There's five of those full of bags and they're all the way like in the back of the truck. Like, and I cannot fit into the truck bed to do it. But I was laying there. I was just like, I can't do it. It's too stressful. Like we're in the middle of nowhere. Did I, did you hear me discuss how many turkeys I saw? We're in the middle of <laughs> And I, let me be honest with you, I'm not afraid of humans. Okay, I'm slightly afraid of humans because like, hi, humans are awful, except knitters. So I'm not like totally afraid of humans breaking into the car, but I am slightly afraid of raccoons. <laughs> Cause the, tr the, um, like the truck cap was like one of those fabric ones that's, and it has like this hole about this big. And I was just like, what if raccoons are just like curious? And they decide that they're going to get in there and rip that open and then just rip through all the bags. What if it happens? I don't have insurance for that. I don't even know where I get insurance for that. So I was really like laying there just like almost to like anxiety attack level. I was like, that's it. I just, I've just got to admit that I'm insane, that I know that this is crazy, but that I have to go outside and, and take these bags out of the truck so that I can sleep. And literally like, must have been seconds after that thought I was asleep. <laughs> so luckily I didn't have to show everybody that I was totally insane. I'll just tell you about it. That's clearly totally not embarrassing at all. But anyway. <laughs> but Needles Up was wonderful. We set up. I got to visit with vendors who are always so amazing and awesome. And every year afterwards, I'm like, why did I not shop more? Because it's, it's overwhelming, right? Like there's lots of people just giving you lots of good energy. And yet at the same time, it's a business thing. So you're, you know, you have to be conscious of the fact that like, this is your income. And so it's just like a lot of stuff to manage. And so I'm always like, oh, I'm going to shop and get this and this and this. And then I come home and I'm like, wait, I totally did not do that at all. So I did get some tuft woolens because she was right there and everything smelled amazing. So I got some more sock soap, which is, I got the chai, which is amazing. And then she had the cider donut hand lotion. So Tova and I both got one. And then I also got the vetiver and cedar wood. I don't know how to say vetiver. Vetiver, vetiver. I'm going with vetiver and cedar wood 
hand lotion because I have the soap and it's my favorite soap. It's kind of dirty hippie, but not really. It's like clean hippie. It's so nice. It has like slightly astringent, not astringent is too strong a word. It is its own smell and I love it. Love it. Okay, and I'm starving. It's not a food smell at all. Did I just do this thing hungry last time too? Eat, woman, eat. Whatever. So that was amazing and it was so wonderful to have so many views. Because that's the great thing about Needles Up. It's like, it is, it is such a wonderful opportunity to visit because it's just this great amount of busyness so that you're not, like I, there's always like a small period in a show where it just naturally empties out, whether it's because it's like the last, you know, hour of a show or because of, you know, just whatever. But there's, there's oftentimes this kind of like lully place where there are fewer people in the, in the venue. And so I always feel this like awkward, like, I don't want people to think I'm like looking at them, like, and like sending them creepy by my stuff, mental images or mental telepathy stuff. So you never want it to be that quiet. But it's also this beautiful level of busy where you can interact with people. And so it doesn't feel like you're like laser focused on one person and making them super uncomfortable. That's where I was going with that. Oh my gosh. Uh, so it's like, the, it was like that perfect level almost the entire show. It was amazing. It was a, there was a lull like about two hours in where I thought, oh no, this is it? <laughs> Like where I thought, oh no, I have grossly overestimated how many bags people want. <laughs> but then it was wonderful. Like Indie Untangled's time tickets must have let out or something. Because then we just had these beautiful, like kind of like gentle washes of folks coming to visit and purchase and shop and visit with each other. That's the other great thing. When people come, they're not just visiting us. They're visiting each other. Because you know you only see each other a couple times a year. Like... So it was just, it was just good. It was lovely. And thank you to everybody who came by. I, and thank you, you know, to everybody. I know not everybody can come by, but that's, that's okay too. Don't feel like you have to. <laughs> but it was lovely. It was wonderful. And of course, Sue and Chelsea. Oh my gosh! Chelsea's baby? Okay, watch out for that baby. It might have superpowers. I'm just saying. Like, I did not hear that baby make a sound the entire time. It was so Vermont crunchy baby, like chilling through the whole thing. It was pretty amazing. I'm not gonna lie. It was awesome. I don't know why I have felt the need to say that, but whatever, it was awesome. So, the Needles Up was amazing. And then of course, Saturday at Rhinebeck is bonkers. There are so many people, it was beautiful weather this year, that it was cool so people could wear their hand knits. Last year was really ridiculously hot. And so people had this like torture of try, trying to wear their hand knits for the first hour and then just like sweating all the time. <laughs> so this year the weather was gorgeous and very cooperative. And of course there was tons of people and certain barns feel crazier than others. Um, in terms of like the amount of humanity that are in them or like maybe it's also just like like the traffic like the inner like the there's one barn that most of them are like you can theoretically walk from one into the other um and they're like very what like the barn itself is quite wide so that you can have like basically what four four vendors across but then there's one that does do that, but it's much narrower. And so the energy there is like crazy. Bonkers. And in fact, I got home uh, on Sunday, even after Sunday, we didn't stay that long Sunday. Um, I got back to the, to the cabin and was like, Oh, I don't think I actually, like, I don't even think I went into the ABC barns. Like I knew I wanted to go to Harrisville and I knew I wanted to go to into the world. And then I don't think I actually saw anything else in those barns. Oh, and Bartlett. Bartlett yarns. I don't think I saw anything else. Like, I, 
I had every intention of doing so, but somehow, like, I got home and I was like, oh, I didn't, what? I didn't miss that somehow. <laughs> I'm telling you, I need a handler at these kinds of events. Like, I just get way too saturated very quickly. <sighs> I don't think there's such a thing as too saturated. Welcome to the show. Um, so it was wonderful though. And of course, so much good stuff. Do you want me to just show you what I bought? Okay, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let me, first off, let me show you my shopping list because I, when I make my shopping list, I know that I'm not gonna like buy everything on that list, but I do wanna show, that, show the list to you because it is things that I have like in my mind. And so I actually almost like in my like, to try to figure out if I wanna make those soon. And so I really almost asked you if you would all share your shopping list, but then I was afraid that I would be like, oh my gosh, I want all of that stuff. Okay. So I didn't. <laughs> so here are my shopping lists. Okay, so again, I knew that I wasn't gonna buy all of these things, but I kind of had them all in my worky worky brain. So I knew that I wanted to go to Harrisville and check out the, um, nightshades because for one thing I felt like they might when I looked at them on online it was kind of hard for me to tell the differences between the colors because they all have a very strong black base um, and so I knew that I really wanted to try to see them in person so that I could get a better handle on which one I liked and of course also to feel the, the how the yarn itself was handling even though I kind of had an idea okay so so that was, and so I thought with the DK, the DK for nightshades, I was like, oh, I might make this Kalem. I'm not sure, but it's like a sleeveless tunic with great big giant pockets, right? So these were all the ones on my list. Um, Woodford's, I've seen two of them at minimum. Well, I've talked to two people who are wearing them and they both really enjoyed their sweater. And so that has been on my um, radar for a while. Um, Second Grace is a Bristol Ivy pattern, and this is just one of the color options. It has like five colors in the yoke, um, six contrast colors. So I thought, well, I'll just kind of have that on my radar in case I see a bunch of worsted and mini skeins or something that I think I would like. Um, then this is, I think, a Thea Coleman Flor de Dor... D that? I just couldn't get it on my face. Listen, it's also a DK. Um, and it has great garter stitch side panels, which I was really interested in. And then I wanted several color work yokes because I have been enjoying the process of knitting those quite a bit lately. And I really enjoy fingering white sweaters. Um, I find them to be very wearable. I reach for them more often than anything else, but I can't just do it. I'm not, I can't, but to just do a texture or just do a solid fingering white sweater is a lot for somebody of, I mean, it's a lot for anybody, but especially for my size, I have a 54 inch bust and that's just like a lot of knitting. <laughs> but so the, so the great thing about the, the yoke is it kind of breaks that up a bit. Um, and so that's why I had several on my list. Um, but I think, so I have a, a sport, a couple sport ones, some fingering weight ones. Wow. And then the other list, or the, the last part of the list, is um, these Widow's Kiss, which is the Thea Coleman. Oh my gosh, I'm kind of obsessed with this pattern. Well, actually, I really just want to knit it. I really just think those cables look so toothy and yummy. I just want to dive into them. Um, and so it is worsted weight, which is n not my favorite for um, a long sleeve sweater. So I can't decide if I should just settle down if I should make a short sleeve what I should do but boy I really am just digging it um the wool and honey very much interested in doing this one it's a garter one with slip stitch right <sighs> so then I just put two color mitts to remember to myself like oh you could look for fingering white I didn't do any of that and then also, I'm kind of obsessed with this one. This is the Lenape. Um, it's a fingering weight split square. 
but I don't think it's necessarily just a square. I'm thinking it's like a five triangle square. Like it's a square plus a triangle um, that's split and it's, I'm really, it was a mystery shawl, which I had not seen at all, but somebody, I think, I think on Instagram, maybe. No, it was the Smith Stitchers group, or Seven Stitchers, Seven Sister Stitchers, I can't, I think it's Smith Stitchers, on Facebook posted that she completed this, and I was just like, ooh, I need to try one of those. Do you know what I mean? Like, that looks wonderful. So I didn't buy any of that, though. But what I did buy yarn for was... <laughs> the after party and I did I still don't have the magazine so I would like to know how I think I'm going to knit this thing um <laughs> but anyway so in theory I might be knitting that oh I'm such a fool um and that so I bought that and then I bought oh for nightshades I ended up I can I thought I might knit that Kalen but then that Kate Davies she released her Ducat pattern, which is like a cropped short or long sleeve DK. And I think that would be perfect for the nightshades over house dresses. Right. Don't you think that'd be super cute for my house dress life? So I'm into it. Okay, so, since we're talking about nightshades, I got a sweater's quantity of nightshades in the um, Insomnia colorway. So it is the one that has olive, right? So it's pretty much reading visually as black, like a very warm black, but up close you get a little bit more of, see, it's so subtle, right? I definitely wanted to see that in person. You can see it up close. So I think it will make knitting it more interesting than knitting a straight black sweater, but it'll read pretty much as just a warm black. And they were all gorgeous. There's like eight or 10 different, you can get a shade card by the way. Right. So I got sweaters worth of that, which is kind of crazy, but whatever. I was on the train, I was on the bandwagon. Apparently there was literally a bandwagon. <laughs> Okay, there's not literally a bandwagon. But they sold out like crazy quick. They had to like bring more down from New Hampshire. Right. So I think like, especially like the purple colorways and I, maybe the reds. But I went back on Sunday. I tried to go on Saturday and it was just like insane. And I even went Saturday afternoon thinking, okay, that's usually safer. Uh, but it was still so crazy in their booth. Like I just could not even... I mean, I got kind of close to it and was like, no, I can't do this. So then I came back on Sunday, first thing when we got there, which was like 9.30 or something, 10 o'clock. So sorry. Whew, so sorry. And then I purchased that at that at that time. So, totally dang it. I think the Ducat would be super cute. Right. And it is, it's like a Cormo, so it has the... Um, I would say, like, if you've knit with the, their yarn, like, um, the Highland Shetland, which is their their oldest yarn, well, from what I understand, it's one of their older yarns, they've had that for a long time, um, they also spin Brooklyn Tweed's woolen spun, so they spin the, um, the loft, the shelter, and then the quarry, and then they also have, um, their flywheel, and I think it's watershed, is that right? This feels like it's it's definitely closer to the um, feel of like Brooklyn Tweed's Loft and Shelter. I would say even more so than their Watershed and Flywheel. To me, it has it's closer to the Brooklyn Tweed, uh, but has a little bit more twist like some of their other yarns. But it's nice. Did I say it was Cormo? I think I did. Is that right? Yes, it is. American Cormo and Wool. So it's wool and spun, 250 yards for 100 gram skein. It's DK weight. And the yarn, the wool is grown in Montana, spun in New Hampshire by Harrisville Designs. Okay. So I'm excited. The um, spun, the samples all felt wonderful. And that kind of like spongy feel that Cormo has felt really great. Okay, so that's that. 
And then I went way outside my comfort zone. Okay, so let me just discuss. Like, I buy from like the same people every year and I again I need a handler I need somebody to like help me focus because I just get so overwhelmed that it's hard for me to concentrate um and see everything especially I think was this year I had my parents and my daughter with me and so I was um you know I was I my my focus was definitely even more fractured than normal but <clears throat> so I not intended necessarily to go to go to Bartlett because I may have another sweaters worth of the yard in my house. But I thought that what I would do when I got suckered into going there is that I would look for color combination that is not my usual wheelhouse. So I went with this. This is sport weight yarn. Um, I'm not sure what color this is because it's not marked. But this is terracotta. And I thought, wouldn't that be beautiful? That lane pattern. Right? Now, it's finger weights, technically sport, whatever. I'm fat. It'll just mean I get to knit a smaller size. Party. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what it was called. Oh, after party. But I could also knit, like, this arrows down. But I just love, I think this after party would look really pretty because it ha, it's not a real, it's not a very sh high contrast look, even though the yarns are high contrast because it's more feathered in the stitch patterns. Like it's not big blocks of stitch color. I think it would work well with this combination. But so anyway, I wanted to go outside my no normal color combination. So it took me a while to really decide. And even afterwards, I was like, what have I done? Cause I'm so ruddy in my, like I am so red in my face that I thought, Oh, I should not go with this color. And then I was just like, you know what? I just really like this color combination. So just shut up. <laughs> so we'll see how I feel about it. Um, but I'm kind of digging it. Like the more I look at it, the more I'm like, it may not be flattering, but as we have discussed, flattering can suck it. So I like it. And it's definitely outside my normal color. I know you're like, that doesn't look that, it's outside my normal sweater color. It is like pinker. It is, it is a little bit, you know, it's different for me. Whatever. So that's that. So then in also in, also in yarn, Another thing I knew I wanted to go look at was um, Into the World had DK this year. And so I definitely was like, oh, I might need that for no reason at all. But I'm glad I did look. Um, and then I wanted to also, Tova wanted a hat, another hat. Well, I offered to make Tova a hat. She didn't really want one. She didn't ask for it. But I had her pick out a yarn color. She likes the fingering weight hats. So she went with... Celine, which is one of their kettle, kettle dyed yarns, and the Pakuka sock, which is 460 yards, four ply, 75 25 superwash merino nylon. It's beautiful purples and wines. And then for me, originally I was like only gonna buy one yard for a one yarn for a Ricky hat, but then I couldn't decide. So this one is. Speckle dyed Dresden DK. So it's 100 grams, 230 yards of a four ply superwash merino. This is the colorway handbags at dawn. So this is super squishy and wonderful. And I am such a sucker for that oxidized copper color. Right? Love it. And then this one is also kettle dyed Dresden. Well, that was speckled kettle. Dresden DK, 230 yards, Superwash Merino, in the Walla Walla colorway. Perfect. So again, not my normal, but I think what I'm going to do with this one, actually, I have this skein of Leading Men Fiber Arts, and I think this needs to be like a brioche cowl, I think is what I've decided to do. I think that'll be beautiful. So this is just a semi-solid from Leading Men Fiber Arts in their DK Superwash Island, or just Superwash Merino, which I love. They're dramaturge, that's what it is. 
I think that'll be a great combination. So, and then that's the yarn I bought. It's not too crazy. I also bought from Going Gnome, I bought the 2018 Rhinebeck Gnome because he's so cute. Right? So she has great little kits. They include the needle, but not the um, foam that you like stab into. But these are just needle felting kits. I always enjoy them. It's like a nice wool adjacent craft. It's in fully, but not knitting. I enjoy it. It's not really wool adjacent. It's knitting adjacent. It's wool involved. So there's that. And then the last thing I got. Okay, let me just say she does not have a website with stuff on it. But uh, she needs to, because I definitely need more. <laughs> Brown Bunny Pottery. I'll put a link to her. She does have a website that has like her contact information on it. It's just not a shop. Um, she was new there this year. So if you've never watched the show before, I am 100% a sucker for a woodland creature. Like, I'm just not going to lie. I don't have any grown-up person Disney wear, but I do love a woodland creature. And her hedgehogs are amazing. So they're the unglazed, and then she's, uh, I don't know, some sort of cutting or technique to give them their right and they are just they're very unique I've never seen anybody do exactly this kind of thing and she had I mean she had like little magnets that were just little hedgies she had these little like trinket boxes that were again with this unglazed clay body and the whole like lid of the box was like a hedgy, and then there was a tiny baby hedgy inside. She, of course, had bunnies. She had, does she have bear? No, I don't think she had bears. Um, she had foxes. She had chickens. She had bunnies. She had so many cute things and like I was doing really well with like being like oh my gosh I really want that she had honey dipper jars which I love aesthetically but I cannot own because I am a mess and I literally will get honey everywhere and be attacked by ants and so we can't do that even though they were amazing it was like the the jar itself and then the lid was either like a fox or a hedgie or a pony it was so cute I could die but just as I had removed myself from the gravity of her booth, I saw this salt cellar and was like, well, dear, you got me. <laughs> there you go. You got me. Oh my gosh. Right. The combination. I mean, I love this kind of glaze. This like sort of, it's not exactly matte, but it's fairly close. It's not a real glassy glaze. I don't know if this is a salt glaze. It's, it feels like that if it's not. Um, but this kind of like just semi matte glaze with this buttery color. <laughs> it is so cute. So I don't think it's going to be a salt seller, but it might be a knitting notions holder because I need to look at it more than it just being in my kitchen. Because I love it. <laughs> I have problems. Okay. I know it. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> the knitting podcast in which I spent 40 minutes talking about my ceramic hedgy salt pig. <laughs> but I love it. So cute. Oh my gosh. So it was amazing. It's wonderful. It's crazy. Like it is so much good energy. I'm the luckiest person ever to have so many kind people say so many kind things to me. Like it's bonker. I mean, it could like spoil a girl, right? Like you're like, you go home and you're like, what? I gotta go to the grocery store now. What What's this? What? I gotta, I gotta do lot. What? 
what? It's a little bit of a crush. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and to have like so many of you who are so cool, um, fellow podcasters, fellow um, vendors, like to say nice things is even more intense and insane. Like, it is just lovely. It is so much good energy coming in. It is not in any way, I mean, it definitely has, it is taxing for the introvert, but it's very different. Because normally I feel like when I am taxed as an introvert, it is because there are, um, like there's negative energy coming at me that I'm having to repel. Or like energy, you know, you like, you know, like energy vampire people who are just like these people that just seem to kind of like siphon off your energy naturally. It's not like they're being malicious. It's just like how they roll. And like, so that usually the, the introversion for me, the recovery from being around people is like dealing with the aftermath of that thing of like trying to like not absorb negative energy and not like just feel like, ah. but this is a totally different introversion experience because people are throwing so much positive energy at you that it's more just like overwhelming to try to like assimilate it all and to like take it in and do something like productive um, with it and not let your, like not get into like a weird headspace about like, you know, like who am I? Like total imposter syndrome kind of stuff happening, which is legit, but like just doesn't help anybody to do. <laughs> So it's just, it's wild. It's wild. Um, it's amazing. So many intensely great hugs all weekend. It was just, and none of you were weird. In case you did say hello to me and in case like you're now like, because I love to do the thing where like 24 hours to 72 hours after an interaction, I worry that I was ridiculous. None of you were ridiculous. You were all awesome. Let me just double check. Nope, you were all awesome. Nobody was weird at all. If you were afraid you were weird, you're wrong. You weren't. <sighs> Podcaster meetup, insane. I always feel so weird because I'm like, there are people like waiting to say hello to me, which is just like bonkers. And like, I just want to have so much more time with everybody. I saw the gentle knitter for like three seconds apparently. And like, we got to talk for about one and a half of those. And I was just like, that is not enough time to spend with your face. And that's how I feel about all of these interactions. Like it's almost like it just, it, I know this is like dumb and like talk about first world problem. Like, right. Like, let me just discuss. I am so happy that I was able to go and that I had access to that. And I had access to the financial means to make that happen and access to family to help me. And like, I acknowledge so much that that is such a privileged place to be in. So let me just like, let's, I know that it almost creates this like hole when you get back, like when you get back, it's not like my life is not wonderful and great and what beautiful, but it is like this richness that you just don't have access to in a real way on a daily basis. And it is so affirming to know that there's so much good energy and so many wonderful people in the world. But then there is like this dip where you're like, but I want to have access to them all the time. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's not in any way to demean like or to lessen the impact of the quality people that I spend every day, all day with. But it's, it's, it's weird. It is weird. I imagine it's like what it feels like if you go to like a super luxe, like super plush vacation just of like richness and opulence and then you come home and you feel like you were very excited to do that thing but then you also feel almost a loss in a strange way because you've been because it's not an every you know it's not the everyday and so it is interesting like it is it's weird to to feel that loss over something that again is such a positive thing and it's so wonderful to know that you're all still out there in your spheres but it does create like this like wrench where you're just like, oh, <laughs> especially I think when we are, you know, again, when you do need to go to the grocery store, I still haven't gone. I think I need a delivery. 
I think I just need to treat myself to that like $10 expense. I'm doing it. I'm just gonna get the delivery. Don't worry. I'm not going to the grocery store. <laughs> but then, so, so then when you are like, so then when you are confronted with like that ugh of some people, it's just like, oh, like you could all be so much more people who are not more. Not you, because you're more. You're fine. You're great. You're wonderful. But it just makes you look at some other people and you're like, well, I don't want to be like a wool evangelist, but um, maybe you need to find some wool in your life so that you can be elevated to the level that these other people are at. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you get a flyer on your door about wool, it was probably me who left it there. I'm just saying. I need a graphic artist. Together we will make wool tracks and we will go door to door <laughs> and spread the word. Anyway, <sighs> that's not just, again, and I'm not like ridiculous in that like, you know, I think everybody that's a wool person is wonderful. Of course there's some snarkiness, come on. Hello. But boy, it's easy to overlook because all the other stuff is really good. Okay, that's all I'm saying. So anyway, if you didn't get to see me, if you didn't get to go, I am sending you the fattest, squishiest hug. And you can check. I give a good, fat, squishy hug. I'm just saying. People who are anti-fat have not hugged enough fat people, is all I'm saying. Your doctor is anti-fat. Do you need me to come give them a hug? So they could be like, hmm, I do see the benefits of this in a way. But like... Biggest, squishiest, fat lady hug. I got like all of the like, I'm, you know, giving it to you. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Thank you so much to all of you who gave me fat lady squishy hugs back. Thank you to all of you who gave me all sorts of people hugs back. Were there any bad hugs? No. We're not. We're all amazing. So I feel like I should talk about 75 other things, but that I should also shut up. So I think I'm going to go with shut up because I'm sure I'll think of something else I need to talk about and I'll talk about that next time. Um, one thing we will be talking about next time, Brambley Hedge. Oh my gosh. Rediscovered that a few weeks ago. Forgot to talk about it in the last podcast. Need to talk about the next one. Do you know what I'm talking about? Review. Okay. Book book club meeting next time. Brambly Hedge. Woodland creature. We're going to meet up. Um, so yeah. Shop update coming. Podcast in a few weeks. I have every intention of getting a sweater modification video out to you very soon. Um, in, as soon as I am capable of doing so, I will do it. Um, but yeah, I think that is otherwise. Oh, I hope you have an excellent week. If you're going to SAF, safe trips, have a wonderful time. Let me just discuss. I've never wanted to go to SAF before. I just Googled how far away it would be to drive. Because I'm feeling the withdrawals. <laughs> I hope you have a great week. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.